praise God from whom all blessing flows. We are here once again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We praise God, we bless God, we magnify his holy name. We thank God for once again, oh Lord, we have come into your presence this day just to give you praise, honor, and glory. We realize, God, that had it not been for you, we would not be here today. So we give you praise, Lord, we give you honor, and we give you glory as we come once again, hallelujah, just to lift up the name of Jesus. We come to magnify you, God. We come to glorify you, God. We come to worship thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we do say thank you now. We just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name today, God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thy feet shall stand within thy gate, O Jerusalem. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We come to praise God today. We come to magnify God today. We glorify God today. Hallelujah. We will sing praises to your name, God. We come to bless God in, in, in the way of psalms and worship and prayer. And, and just lift up our hands and say, hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Glory be to God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We magnify you and we glorify thy holy name. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray it all. Amen and thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, our Father. As we come now, as we know that Pastor is not here with us this morning, but he told us to keep on, keep on keeping on and keep the fire burning and yeah. hallelujah that we bless his name, we bless God for him, and we pray that him and his family is getting the rest that they so rightly deserve this morning. And we're going to carry on in his holy name and in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. So as we come around the altar this morning, Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Then, Lord, as we come, we will come uh, with our scripture this morning, and then we will come with our prayer. Hallelujah. And we'll be back. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. I will love you, O oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. Thus I read Psalms 18, the first three verses. God's words, God's people. Amen. Let us bow our heads now as we go to the throne of grace. O oh, merciful and wonderful Father, from whom all blessings flow. Lord God, we come before you this hour, Lord. Lord, first to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Lord, and starting us on our way. Thank you, Lord, as you touched us with your finger of love, Lord, you clothed us in our right mind. You gave us, Lord, food to eat, clothes to wear, Lord, and shelter over the body. Lord, we thank you right now for being God all by yourself. As we come before you this morning, Lord, we want to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise because you are God and before you there is no other. Now, Lord, we come by our head, humble as we know how you are, Lord, like an empty pitcher before a full fountain, asking for mercy, Lord, while mercy can be found. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. We praise your holy name, Lord. Before you, Lord, there was no other, Lord. You are the only true and wise and living God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we know this, Lord, because you live inside of us. Now, Lord, your people come before your throne right now, Lord. Some come before you, Lord, for one thing, and some come for you for another. But they come, Lord, knowing that you are God, and you can do anything but fail. Lord, they come leaning and 
depending on you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being there, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for picking us up out of the muck and the miry clay. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your Holy Spirit, Lord, to lead, guide, and direct us. Thank you, Lord, for mending this no wretched body, Lord, giving us health and strength, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that you'll do it, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to heal our bodies, Lord. Some come to us, Lord, with the pain rack of the body. Some come rack even with the COVID-19, Lord. But they come to you, Lord, the God who sits high and look low. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we, we ask in you, Lord, and we know, Lord, if we ask, it shall be done. Lord, we come, Lord, humble before you right now, asking, Lord, for mercy, for our mercy can be found. Some come for even a financial blessing this morning, Lord. Lord, you can do all things, Lord, through Jesus Christ, Lord, that strengthen us, Lord. Give us, Lord, what you have in your home to us, Lord. Lord, give us, Lord, what you have for us to hold, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for doing what you said you'll do, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for finishing what you started, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you've been so good, Lord. Even though I don't see it, I know it's coming. Give us the patience, Lord, to wait on you, Lord. Give us the wisdom, Lord, that you see us stand in need of, Lord. Bless our pastor right now, Lord, even in his absence, Lord. Wrap your loving arms around him, Lord, and bless his name, Lord. Bless his going and his coming. Bless his family, Lord. And then, Lord, look after the members of this church, Lord. Jerusalem Baptist Church family, Lord. Lord, look from the pulpit to the door, Lord. From the east to the west, Lord. Touch, Lord. Create in us, Lord, a clean heart and a renew a right spirit in us, Lord. Lord, we come before you right now, Lord, asking because your word tells us, Lord, that we ask and it shall be given. If we seek your face, Lord, you shall knock, Lord, and the door will be opened unto us, Lord. Lord, you've been faithful in all your promises, Lord, and we trust, Lord, that you'll continue to be faithful, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Your word tells us, Lord, that if we would seek your face, humble ourselves and pray that you would heal our land, Lord. Lord, we're waiting on your healing, Lord. We know you'll do it, Lord. We just don't know when and we don't know how, but we trust in your holy word, which tells us, Lord, that we lean not to our understanding, but by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God, it shall be done. It shall come to pass. We thank you right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and all to all our blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord.
hallelujah. Oh, yes, we come to praise him this morning. We come to magnify his name and glorify him. For he is worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Ah, oh, glory to God. He's worthy to be praised. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Stretch forth thy powerful hands, O oh Lord, and touch today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. If you heard the prayer, go out, O oh Lord, to the, for the altar call, O oh God, and we pray that you receive the prayer this morning and receive the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. For he is worthy to be praised. And the Lord said, whatever you ask of me and believe, hallelujah, you shall have. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, God. And we can stand on God's promises. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We do thank God for the prayer this morning. We thank God for the scripture. And now we will have the responsive reading. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good morning to all of God's children. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Our responsive reading will come from Psalms 34. Psalms 34, the first three verses, and it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalms 34, the first three verses I've read into our hearing. Lord continue to bless us and keep us with this powerful word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
God of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, I will bless thee, Lord. With my hands lifted up, with my hands lifted up. And with my heart filled with praise. Chapter 12 at the same time and just 
Put your little bookmark there. Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Going down to number 11 for me. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. going to go on over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Just a few verses, very familiar, 7 through 10. Yes, sir. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. But this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you know, we just come before you one more time this morning to lift you up. And we come, Lord God, just thanking you for your word, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Father God, thanking you for sending a sanctified word. And Lord, I thank you, God, for hearing and answering my prayer when I ask you, Lord, what would you have me to say to you, people? Lord, I thank you and I praise you, God. I bless your holy and your righteous name this morning. So, oh, Heavenly Father, we are here, God, asking you to go from heart to heart, mind to mind, from every listener, Lord God. And I'm asking right now, God, that you would forgive us of all of our sins that we have committed, Father God. Open up our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears this morning, God, that we would be receptive to your word, Lord God, that your word can work a mighty work through us, oh, Master God, that we will run on and see what the end is going to be, oh God, that we can run on, Lord, proclaiming Jesus as Lord, winning and making disciples, oh, as you told us to do in your holy word, God. Also, use your word today, oh Master, in a mighty way. Lord, I just present myself to you, God. Lord, I'm just clay, oh Master, but I just thank you right now, God, that in your word you told me, Lord, that you consider that we are but dust. Thank you, Master, for that. That cho choosing to pick up dust like me, God, and give me your word, oh, Master. So right now, Father God, I yield the floor to you, oh, Master. You have the right of way, oh, God. Lord, you know what you gave me, God. Anything that I've added, Lord, that didn't line up, remove it, Lord God. Don't let me say what you don't want me to say, God. Use me as your vessel, God, and say only what thus saith the Lord to your people, oh, Master, because we need to hear a word from you. We thank you and we love you, Lord God, and we will bless you with a heart of thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Certainly we give glory and honor to the Lord just for an, another opportunity to stand and to proclaim a word from the Lord this morning. I, I just thank and I praise God today. And you know, I thank and I praise God for Reverend Beard also to entrust the pulpit to me this morning to deliver a word from the Lord. I just de declare to you it's because he his faith and his trust is in the Lord. Yeah. That's really the reason. And, I, and I'm just thankful yeah. 
for that this morning. So for all that's been said and done thus far, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Oh, I just thank, thank the Lord this morning as I look at the few of us that are assembled here this morning, that every Sunday, I, without fail, I can count on you all to just carry out the will of the Lord. Oh, what a blessing it is to be used of God. What a blessing it is to know him as our own this morning. What a word. The message for today, I believe it's already put up on your screen, is a right now praise. The point is that the Lord desires and deserves a right now praise. Amen. It's very simple, isn't it? A right now praise. Right now. Right now. As we have spent the, the past six months adjusting to the new normal in our lives, many of God's people have spent a lot of time thinking back on the good old days. Almost everyone is looking for that time when things will return to some semblance of normalcy. We at least want to find a place wherein we are comfortable with our day-to-day -day lives. There are even some who are, are having a difficult time with truly praising God during this time. And I mean praising him like we used to in the good old days. Surely we're all giving him praise and we're giving him thanks as we are being touched by the inconveniences. We're being touched by death, fear, change like we never thought would come, but are we praising him like we used to do in the good old days? What I'm talking about is praising God just because he is God. He desires and he deserves a right now praise. So we are led to look at what the word says, and then we can each examine our own selves. I wasn't sent today to examine anybody else. And I got some things to say about David in this 34th Psalm this morning, but I give my disclaimer first that I'm not here to judge David either. I'm just going to tell you what the word says. That's right, that's right. And then we can all examine ourselves. David is gone. David can't do no more examining himself. But while the blood is yet running warm in our veins, I'm telling you, we need to examine ourselves. Are we praising him like we used to do back in the good old days? And now the good old days is not back to my childhood. The good old days is before the floodgates opened up around here. Hmm. About six months ago, and we got a new normal. Oh, before that, were we praising him just because he's God and he's worthy of a right now praise. So our examination that he has sent to the church today is in three parts. Part number one deals with praising the Lord after he has brought us through. Part two deals with praising him while we are going through. And part three deals with praising him just because of who he is. Disclaimer number two, I'm telling you on the front end, because 
I refuse to let the devil steal any of the glory of God. That I am not here to tell the church, praising him after he brought you through, is any better or any worse than praising him while you're going through, is any better or any worse than praising him just because he is God. I am giving you all the benefit of what I had to go through to get what God gave me for the church without taking y'all through all of that. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you. Because at first, it was a little judgmental on my part. Oh, did I just admit that out loud? Oops, there it is. You know, I thought one way was a little different, a little better. I'm not God. Ain't nobody praising me. You're not praising me. But see, when you ask God, God, tell me what you want to give your people. This is what you're going to find out this morning. Is that before I can give you anything, God got to give me something. And when you want God to give you something, sometimes you got to go through something in order to get something. And I will tell you what I went through. Don't get it twisted because I didn't go through it for no reason. But I'm telling you on the front end, it's not about David doing nothing no different than Paul and everything, one better than the other, and you doing it the right way and Tom doing it the wrong way. I'm not God. Your praises are not to me. It doesn't have to meet my standard. God is telling the church this morning that he desires and he is worthy of, he deserves a right now praise. I don't care if you're going through, you just came through, you're on your way in. It doesn't matter. He is worthy of a right now praise. So now let's go on into part number one. We ought to look at David's story as it relates to this psalm of praise, Psalm 34. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Stop it right there. Let me tell y'all something. In the last three weeks, I have heard more people quoting that psalm than I probably have ever heard in my life. Now that we're doing Facebook church, and our half our life is on Facebook now, because half us stuck in the house, we can't go nowhere, no how. So you, now you're just clicking and clicking and clicking. Everybody is, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Y'all ready for the other one? We can't stop hearing. I'm here to tell you now, if my people, I, I ain't even going to say it again this morning. I'm hearing it over and over, and I want to say this morning, I don't care nothing about quoting all these scriptures. I'm talking about living the word of God. So David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now I'm going to tell y'all my joke. Y'all heard me say everybody longing for the good old days. This thing took me way back to my daddy. And I want y'all to know my daddy's been dead a very, 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 very long time. He died when I was in high school. But there was something about my relationship with him that this psalm and what, what happened with me took me on back to the good old days. My daddy was a man who loved to hear me talk. He not only loved to hear me sing, but he loved to hear me talk. I couldn't talk too much for that man. My voice was like music to this man's ears. And even now, I'll tell y'all the truth, my sister is kind of similar to how he was. Sylvia will allow me to talk, and because my voice comes from way down low, it's like a soothing sound to it was that way for my daddy. When my daddy was sick, and I would just talk to my daddy, I would just massage his neck, because he was in discomfort, and all he wanted to do was hear that voice. Hear that voice. It was like soothing to him. So in other words, I could ask my daddy anything. I wasn't a disturbance to him. I, I didn't talk too much, get on his nerve. He just wanted to hear that voice. Well, how y'all know, my sister will let my voice put her to sleep. 
She loves when I talk. Because for one thing, when I get excited, I talk. And I will run you over with a, let me tell you what the Lord did to this girl. Let me tell you something. You can't stop me. And she's quiet, but she knows that when I'm like that, everything is all right. When my daddy would hear me talk and ask him crazy questions, he knew everything was all right. If I get quiet or I start stepping back and just giving you the look, you don't have to wonder, baby. Something is wrong yeah. with me. Yeah. So you know what happened? Look at this Psalm 34. When I open my Bible, see, a lot of us using the cell phone now. We're using tablets. We're using everything else and, and, and stuff like that, and there's value to that too. But when I, the, the Lord said, tell them I'm worthy of a right now praise, and he took me to 34th Psalm. I said, I don't want to preach from that. Everybody's preaching that. Everybody's saying that. I don't want to say that. I got nerves now. I'm telling you, hmm, I might not have sense, but I got nerves. But guess what? He's my father. He knows that's what I'm saying to myself. Is I everybody saying that, Lord? Now, what else you want me to add to that? Well, I open the Bible and, okay, y'all ready now? It says, praise to the Lord. A psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. That's what this King James Version Bible here had as the preamble. The other Bible I got at the house, I look in that one too. And that one says, this was what David was referring to when he acted like he was mad before the king. Well, because he is my father, I went straight to where I would have gone with my daddy. Oh, Lord, I don't understand that. You don't know how many times I heard the scripture in the last few weeks and over the whole of my life years, but this time he was telling us something. He made me see that, and then I asked the question that one would only ask their daddy. Well, Lord, please tell me how long after David was acting like a madman did he decide, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'm kind of familiar with that scripture. I don't think I remember nothing about David blessing the Lord while David was acting like he was a lunatic. I remember the scriptures about David running and ducking and hiding and what part of that is I will bless the Lord at all times? So, Lord, I want you to explain to me. How long after David was acting like a madman did David decide, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth? Well, you know when you ask your daddy a question, you expect an answer, but you know that that's not Ella Godfrey, my daddy. That's the Lord, my father, and he don't play with me. So he don't answer me the way that my daddy answered me. What my God says is I'll show you better than I can tell you. Or my daddy said, let me do whatever I need to do to answer this child's question. So I asked the Lord. Was he blessing the Lord at all times while he was hiding and ducking and running? And, 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 and what was he doing? So... And well, maybe I missed something in the scripture because the Lord wasn't answering me. So turn with me now. I went on over to 1 Samuel because that's the scripture where David was acting like a madman. So in 1 Samuel chapter 21, go and turn to it with me. And I know y'all got it already because y'all got the cell phone thing too. But we're going to look at verse, start at 10. And you find these words. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances? saying Saul had slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them 
and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard, or he really acted out. Then said Akish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? Did ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Did y'all hear me read anything about David blessing the Lord at all times? Or did y'all hear that the, he let the spittle come out of his mouth? He acted real. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon. He acted real crazy, the Deacon said. He sure enough did. So now, I said, now, so okay. What God want us to get from that? So at first I thought, well, okay, well, my question, maybe my question was just food for thought. Food for thought. Today I just want to simply confirm to the church that God is worthy of a right now praise. Whenever David got around to realizing that God was worthy of praise, David praised the Lord. What the Bible doesn't tell us is that David is a perfect man. The Bible don't tell you you a perfect man. It doesn't tell me that I'm a perfect woman. But I want you to know that God is perfect. And he is worthy to be praised. If you read on in the 34th Psalm, you will find that, that David starts to, to tell us about how God is near to the brokenhearted, how God will deliver you out of your trouble. Sometimes when you've been through some trouble, that's when you find out that he's worthy to be praised. But what I would take this to mean is that at some point, David learned that I will bless the Lord at all times. It ain't too late to praise yeah. him, y'all. Yeah. If you find that you just were so consumed with the shock of the new normal. You're so confused with the hurt and the pain of death in the family and, and it seemed like a lot of people dying all over the place. And, and, and you know, life has a way of knocking us off our feet sometimes. But when you pick yourself up, when you come back to yourself, don't forget that God is worthy of a right now praise. That's my assignment for today. Oh, whoops, let's go to part two. Turn with me if you would. We're going to talk about a, another well-quoted saint of the Lord, 2 Corinthians. Ah, uh, let's just talk about Paul for a little bit. Part two is about praising God while we are going through. Again, very, very familiar scripture. I've already read it before you. Everybody is familiar with the thorn in Paul's flesh. Many of us have examined our lives and ourselves over and over trying to figure out, well, golly, I would say he had a thorn in the flesh. I got about 40 thorns in mine. My goodness, Paul was doing good. <laughs> you know, but everybody is familiar with the thorn in Paul's flesh. But out of the scripture that I read to you, I want you to go down. We're at chapter 12, verse number 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. But I want you to focus on the B part of the verse where Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. How many of us realize today that right where we are, going through the going through, that praises unto God comes out of your belly. Yeah. It is different than what your mind may conceive. It's not about making up your mind that you're going to praise. 
praise the Lord. Yeah. We can make up our mind all day long. I've been around this corner long enough to know that the mind changes like the wind. Yeah. I've been out here long enough to tell you that there are people that want to go to the restroom and can't make themselves go to the restroom. There are people that want to stop themselves and can't stop themselves. Right. There are people that want to sit down, but they got a nervous condition and they can't make themselves sit down. Yeah. There are people that want to have the nerves to get up and say something, but they're not able to make themselves say something. What I want you to know is that God is in control of all things. And praise does not begin with you and me. Praise begins with him. It is a gift from God that starts down in your sanctified soul and it comes up. We don't create anything. All that was created was created by God. So God puts praises on the inside by way of the Holy Ghost and it bubbles up out of your belly and you praise God because he is worthy. It comes from him through us as a conduit and is offered back up to him because he is worthy to be praised this morning. He is worthy. Now you know he said he glory. He might rather glory in his infirmities. That doesn't mean while he going through. Please don't think I'm, I got it confused because I don't. That's not what that means. But we run around pretending like all is well. Oh, we glory in making it look good. We run around every now and then, and we say, everybody got their problems. But that's said about 1% of the time. The other 99% of the time, we running around saying, if you love the Lord, you shouldn't have all these problems. We're talking out of both sides of our necks. I'm here to tell you. The Paul went through one infirmity after the next infirmity after the next infirmity. And I stopped by to tell you that God is worthy to be praised no matter what you're going through. No matter how often you're going through it. It doesn't matter if you feel like you have been beat down to the white meat. God is worthy to be praised and you don't have to be ashamed. Just praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, I tell you. I don't know how y'all Bible set up. I'm just going here with what I looked at in mind. In 11, that's chapter 11. It's on the same page as 12 in my book with the part that I'm looking at. But I start at verse 24. Paul says, of the Jews five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Y'all want to count his infirmities? Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, sound like Paul needed to catch his breath, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and in nakedness. That sounds like a man that was down to the last breath over and over and over and over and over and over again. And yet he says, I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon 
me. Somebody needs to hear it this morning. Because in your household, or wherever you happen to be, you're going through what you're going through. But when your family members can see that even though you're going through, you still blessing the Lord. They're looking for, when is mama going to praise God like she used to do back in the good old days? When is the big deacon that was marching all over the floor in the church, now that we already had to bury three family members and the dog, when is he going to praise God like he used to do back in the good old days? Because see, when you are in your infirmity and then the power of the Holy Ghost moves on the inside of a believer and a bubble up of praise comes out of your body. It's like streams of living water springing up out of you that others might see and that God will receive the glory. He's worthy, I tell you. This is what he told me to tell his people this morning. It's not pretending that hurt don't hurt and cuts don't bleed and that we don't mourn when we grieve. Just run around and grin and act like we lost our mind. No. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes that there's a season for everything. The Bible also tells us that we ought to rejoice with them that rejoice and mourn with they that mourn. So he knows all about us. It's all right to mourn, but not as if you don't know God. If he got up again, your loved ones will get up again. If I go down, don't worry about it. To be absent from the body. Oh, I'm going to be at the feet of my Jesus. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy is going to come in the morning. Where is the praise? Like we used to praise him in the good old days where we just praising him because we had a nice house, four wheels to drive around in a two and a half car garage. Hallelujah. Or I'll be praising him because he is God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'd rather praise him right in my infirmity. I praise him anyhow. I praise him anyhow. Matter of fact, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, in everything, give thanks. I had to throw that in because see, like I said, when Paul gave you the list of everything, Paul didn't say he was blessing the Lord doing all of that. But Paul, y'all know Paul wrote, what, three-fourths of the New Testament, so you can go over here to to 1 Thessalonians and you find that Paul clarifies it very well. He says, in everything, give thanks. You don't have to give thanks because somebody died, but guess what? In the midst of it, God's still working. Give the Lord thanks. Give the Lord the praise. Part three, praising God right now just because of who he is. If you got any unsaved family members, make sure they're tuning in now. To praise God, first of all, you got to know God. You got to know him for who he is. To praise him just because of who he is. So let us close now by taking a look at the true and living God. Our God is God the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
all together. The three are one. Our salvation is through Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this is why we must praise him just for who he is. He did three things. That means he need, you, we need to praise him no matter what this life brings our way. Our Lord, our Savior, Jesus, came into this world to walk out before us the example for the assignment that he gave us. He came to walk it out so that we can see how to walk it out. The word of God says that he became our example. Case in point. The time is far spent. I'll just give you the scripture and I'll tell you what it's about. Case in point. John 11, 41 through 43. This is the story where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. He came to show us what he told us to do. In that story, you find that Jesus wept. He wept because of the death of Lazarus. It was an example to let us know that our Lord is acquainted with our suffering. He's acquainted with our humanity. He is acquainted with the things that hurt us and concern us. He's acquainted with human emotions because Jesus himself went. But what you need to see in that scripture is that before Jesus told Lazarus to get up, he said a prayer unto the Father. This is what I want you to hear. He said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. We need to always be pointing people toward God through Christ Jesus. He came to be the example so that we stop getting this thing twisted. We're not supposed to be pointing people toward obeying Tom, Dick, Harry, Susan, Sharon, and Sandra. Jesus pointed people toward the Father by example, and he told us to make disciples down here. We are to walk after his example. I'm telling you, he's worthy of a right now praise because when you know him for being God and you really know who he is, it doesn't matter what people say down here. False prophets will come. People will say whatever meets the tone of the day. But if you know him and you know him and you know him for yourself, you know that what you're supposed to do is point this world to God through Jesus Christ, the Father. Why? Because Jesus did it. He did it by example. He's worthy to be praised right now. Because that doesn't change because I got de death in the family. He did it. Secondly, he came to pay now, I'm going to make this thing personal because I just can't help myself. He came to pay my sin debt in full. Yeah, 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 yeah. He came to pay your sin debt in full. He came to die. He knew he was going to die. Then he knew how he was going to die. That it was going to be a horrific death. You don't even know how you're going to die. I can walk out here now and just have a massive heart attack and bam, I'm gone. No forewarning. Just gone. Jesus knew how he was going to die. Yeah. That it was going to be gruesome and painful and awful. He's worthy. I'm a right now praise. If you got life and breath in your body, he's worthy to be praised right now. Because that's what he came for. 
redeem in order to usher in the indwelling dispensation of the Holy Ghost. If Jesus hadn't come, died, gone to hell, paid our sin debt in full, was glorified and ascended to the Father, he says in the word, the Holy Spirit would have not come to indwell the believers so that you can know him for your own self. So that he can speak to you for his own self. The Bible tells me that when he did it, that the veil was rent in two. No longer a separation. We got him on the inside. He's worthy. And he said, Robin, tell my people, I desire and I deserve to receive a right now praise. I bless the Lord, I tell you this morning. You see me closing up the book because I want you to know what I said is true. In order for God to give you something to give to somebody else, you got to go through something for yourself to get it to them. God told me, y'all, tell my people, a right now praise. I wrote that thing down. He t- told me those scriptures, and I'm writing, and I'm writing, and I'm still asking questions, if y'all understand me from my childhood. Lord, I don't understand. Show me now, Lord, what you want. I praise you all the time, Lord. Well, what you want, Lord? What do you want? Y'all ready for it? So now in the new normal, y'all know we all working at home, those who can. I'm working in the house. So this is what happened. Boom, bam. Air conditioner went out. It's 90-something degrees out there, and the air conditioner upstairs in my house went up. And that's where I work from home. It got so hot, it remind me to tell y'all, y'all don't, y'all, y'all live right. Get saved, because hot is hot. And I was in a hot situation. So for three days past, the AC man came to the house, y'all, couldn't get it fixed. Still under warranty, so you can't touch nothing. So we waiting, you know, and the, the AC man came, he did what he could do. Air conditioner still didn't work. Every morning, I start my work, and I'm on that computer, I'm working. The harder it gets outside, the harder my office area is getting. The heat index that week was going past 100. I was working, and I was working, and I was working. Let me tell y'all something. He came three different times before he got that AC fixed. Now, after about four days of that suffering that I went through, I got sick. I couldn't lift my head. I told my sister, I knew I lost a good five pounds just in sweating, just in sweating for the last several days. Did you hear me tell you about it? Y'all better hear what I tell you this morning. I sat at that computer. I had to check out from work. I never check out sick. I ain't never sick. I must miss bouncy, bounce, bounce, bounce. I was out for the count. I was home and I was sick. I was sitting at that computer, y'all. I don't cry a lot. Most of the time when I cry, it's just in the spirit. But I mean cry, pity cry. That's not really me. But to, honest, to be honest with you, sometimes I feel better if I just let it out. And I felt so bad. My family was concerned, because y'all know these days, if you bump your toe and you got a pain, they think you got COVID-19. Right. You don't want to feel nothing wrong. Right. And here this girl who always bumps and I'm, y'all couldn't keep up with me, you know. Uh-huh. But anyway, I'm out. They were concerned. I'm, I started to cry. I'm sitting there, and I said, you know, Lord, I'll just feel better if I cry. I just don't feel good. And I said to the Lord, Lord, is this how I'm going to leave here? They're going to just come in this house and find me I milk. <laughs> I was so sick, y'all. Then all of a sudden, a taunting came. And guess what the taunting was? 
I bless the Lord at all times. Praise him now. Praise him now while you're in pain. Praise him now while you can barely hold your head up. Praise him now. There was nobody there to see me. Everybody was home. I'm in there by myself baking like a baked potato, crying and feeling sick. And I want the church to know that from somewhere down in my belly, I heard these words. I love you, Lord. You know what, Lord? It doesn't matter to me. I don't care how I go and I don't care when I go. I'm going to go loving you because you're worthy, my God. And I just want to go telling you, God, that I thank you for paying my sin debt in full. I thank you, God, for saving a wretch like Rob. Oh, if I wake up tomorrow and I find my soul is in heaven, before I go, God, I want to tell you that I love you, God. I want to tell you that I appreciate you, God. I want to tell you that I thank you for my salvation, God. I thank you right now, God. I thank you. I thank you right now, God. I thank you. It's not about how I feel. It's not about my opinion. It's not about making up my mind. It's about you, a God, and beside you. There is no other. Beside you, there is none that's worthy to receive glory, honor, and praise. But before I can tell the people that might be hurt, that God says, give them a right now praise. I had to go to a place, you understand me? Where I couldn't eat applesauce and drink water. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't turn over and feel better on the left nor the right. But I said, God, I bless you, Holy Spirit, Because you're worthy to be praised. If it were not for what you did, we all would be lost. All would be lost. So I'm telling you out of obedience that God said to tell his people today that he desires a right now praise. We were created to make his praise glorious. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Praise the Lord, all ye saints of the Most High God. It's not about a scream, a shout, a running around and a spinning. I spin because that's Robin's way. Your way might be to wave your hand. Your way might be to hum. What a mighty God we serve. But God knows you personally. He loves you personally. He died for you personally. He doesn't want to hear my voice for your praise. So lift your holy hands if that's how you praise him. He deserves the most high praise. And I was sent this morning to tell you that God desires and he deserves a right now praise. I close by telling you to praise him, first of all, you got to know him. It's a good time to get to know him. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. So if you've never accepted Jesus Christ, I told you what he did for you. I told you about the love of a Savior who loved you so much that he gave his life that you would have a way to come to the Father. Ah, Romans 10 tells me that if you would believe that, in your heart that he paid your sin debt in full. Ah, and if you would confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved, my brother. He died for you, my sister. Give your life to him because he is real and he is worthy. Ah, he's worthy. You want to praise him. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus.
Jesus. He didn't say that you'll never go through problems, but he said that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Ha, huh? give your life. Now is the day of salvation. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.